by Robert D. Sansusi. Pictures by Jerry Pinkney. Back in the old days, there was a widow with two daughters named Rose and Blanche. They lived on a farm, so poor, it looked like the tail end of bad luck. They raised a few chickens, some beans, and a little cotton to get by. Rose, the older sister, was cross and mean and didn't know beans from bird's eggs. Blanche was sweet and kind and sharp as 40 crickets. But their mother liked Rose the best because they were alike as two peas in a pod, bad-tempered, sharp-tongued, and always putting on airs. The mother made Blanche do all the work around the place. She had to iron the clothes each morning using an old iron filled with hot coals, chop cotton in the afternoon, and string the beans for supper. While she was doing these chores, her mama and sister would sit side by side in rocking chairs on the shady porch, fanning themselves and talking foolishness about getting rich and moving to the city where they could go to fancy balls, wearing trail-trained dresses and lots of jewels. One hot day, the mother sent Blanche to the well to fetch a bucket of water. When the girl got there, she found an old woman wrapped in a raggedy black shawl, near fainting with the heat. Please, child, give me a sip of water, the old woman said. I'm about to die of thirst. Yes, Auntie, said Blanche, rinsing out her bucket and dipping up some clean, cool, well water. Drink what you need. Thank you, child, said the old woman when she had taken swallow after swallow of water. You got a spirit that do right in your soul. God is going to bless you. Then she walked away down the path that led to the deep woods. When Blanche got back to the cabin, her mother and sister hollered at her for taking so long. This water's so warm it's near boiling, shouted Rose, and she dumped the bucket out on the porch. Here your poor sister's near dying for a drop of cool water, her mother screamed, and you can't even bring her that little thing. The two of them scolded and hit Blanche until the frightened girl ran away into the woods. She began to cry since she didn't have anywhere to go and she was scared to go back home. Suddenly, around a bend in the patch came the old woman in the raggedy black shawl. When she saw Blanche, she asked kindly, What's made you cry so, you poor child? Mama and Sister Rose lit into me for something that wasn't my fault, said Blanche, rubbing tears off her cheek. Now I'm afraid to go home. Hush, child. Stop your crying. You come on home with me. I'll give you supper and a clean bed. But you got to promise you won't laugh at anything you see. Blanche gave her word of honor that she wouldn't laugh. Then the old woman took her by the hand and led her deep into the backwoods. As they walked along the narrow path, bramber bushes and tree branches opened wide in front of them and closed up behind them. Soon they came to the old woman's tumble-down shack. A cow with two heads and horns like corkscrews peered over the fence at Blanche and brayed like a mule. She reckoned it was a pretty strange sight, but she didn't say anything, not wanting to hurt the old woman's feelings. Next, she saw that the yard in front of the cabin was filled with chickens of every color. Some were hopping about on one leg, some running about on three or four or even more. These chickens didn't cluck, but whistled like mockingbirds. But strange as all this was, Blanche stuck by her promise not to laugh. When they got inside the cabin, the old woman said, Light the fire, child, and cook us some supper. Mm -hmm. So Blanche fetched kindling from the woodpile outside the back door. The old woman sat down near the fireplace and took off her head. 
She set it on her knees like a pumpkin. First she combed out her gray hair, then she plaited it in two long braids. Blanche got pretty scared at this, but the woman had been nothing but kind to her, so she just went on lighting the fire. After a bit, the old woman put her head back on her shoulders and looked at herself in the slither of mirror nailed to the cabin wall. <clears throat> she said, nodding. That's better. Then she gave Blanche an old beef bone and said, Put this in the pot for supper. Now Blanche was near starving, and the bone looked like a pretty sad meal for the two of them, but she did what the old woman said. Shall I boil it for soup, Auntie? she asked. Look at the pot, child, the old woman said, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> the pot was filled with thick stew, bubbling away. Next, the woman gave Blanche only one grain of rice and told her to grind it in the stone mortar. Feeling mighty foolish, Blanche began to pound the grain with the heavy stone pestle. In a moment, the mortar was overflowing with rice. When they had finished supper, the old woman said, It's a fine moonshiny night, child. Come with me. They set themselves down on the back porch steps. After a time, dozens of rabbits came out of the underbrush and formed a circle in the yard. The men rabbits all had frock tail coats and the lady rabbits had little trail train dresses. They danced, standing on their hind feet, hopping about. One big rabbit played a banjo and the old woman hummed along with it. Blanche kept time by clapping along. The rabbits did the square dance, a Virginia reel, and even a cakewalk. The girl felt so happy, she never wanted to leave. She sat and clapped until she fell asleep. And the old woman carried her inside and put her to bed. When Blanche got up the next morning, the old woman told her, Go milk my cow. The girl did what she was told, and the two-headed cow with the curly horns gave her a bucket of the sweetest milk she'd ever tasted. They had it with their morning coffee. You gotta go home now, child, the old woman said to Blanche, who was washing the breakfast dishes. But I tell you, things will be better from here on out. And since you're such a good girl, I got a present for you. Go to the chicken house. Any eggs that say, take me, you go ahead and take. But if you hear any say, don't take me, you leave them be. When you get near home, throw those eggs one after another over your left shoulder so they break on the road behind you. Then you'll get a surprise. When Blanche got to the little chicken house, she found all the nests filled with eggs. Half were gold or silver or covered with jewels. Half looked no different from the eggs she got from her chickens back home. All the plain ones told her, take me. All the fancy ones cried, don't take me. She wished she could take just one gold or silver or jeweled egg, but she did what the old woman told her and only scooped up the plain ones. She and the old woman waved goodbye to each other, and Blanche went on her way. Part way home, she began to toss the eggs, one at a time, over her left shoulder. All sorts of wonderful things spilled out those eggs. Now diamonds and rubies, now gold and silver coins, now pretty silk dresses and dainty satin shoes. There was even a handsome carriage that grew in a wink from the size of a matchbox and a fine brown and white pony that sprouted from the size of a cricket to draw it. <sighs> Blanche loaded all those lovely things into the carriage and rolled the rest of the way home like a grand lady. When she got back to the cabin, her mother and sister just gawked at her new finery. We 
where did you get all these things? Her mother asked, making Rose help Blanche carry the treasure inside. That evening, the mother cooked dinner for the first time since Blanche was old enough to hold a skillet. All the time telling Blanche what a sweet daughter she was, her mama got the girl to tell about the old woman and the cabin in the woods and the talking eggs. When Blanche was asleep, the mother grabbed Rose and told her, You gotta go into the woods tomorrow morning and find that old auntie. Then you'll get some of those talking eggs for yourselves so we can have fine dresses and jewels just like your sister. When you get back, I'll chase Blanche off and keep her things myself. Then we'll go to the city and be fine ladies like we was meant to be. Can't we just run her off tonight so I don't have to go poking through the woods looking for some crazy old auntie? Rose whined. There's not near enough for two, her mama said, getting angry. So you do as I say, and don't be so contrary. So the next morning, Rose set out drag foot into the woods. She dawdled mostly, but soon met the old woman in this raggedy black shawl. Uh, my sweet little sister Blanche told me you got a real pretty house and all, said Rose. I'd appreciate to see it. You can come with me if you've a mind to, said the old woman. But you've got to promise not to laugh at whatever you see. I swear, said Rose. So the old woman led her through the bramble bushes and tree branches into the deep woods. But when they got near the cabin and Rose saw the two-headed cow that brayed like a mule and the funny-looking chickens that sang like mockingbirds. She yelled, <laughs> If there's ever a sight, that's one! <laughs> that's the stupidest thing in the world! Then she laughed and laughed until she nearly fell down. <laughs> woo! Woo! Hmm. said the old woman, shaking her head. Inside, Rose complained when she was asked to start the fire, and she wound up with more smoke than flame. When the old woman gave her an old bone to put in the pot for supper, Rose said crossly, That's going to make a mighty poor meal. She dropped it in the pot, but the old bone remained a bone, so they only had thin soup for supper. When the old woman gave her one grain of rice to grind on the mortar, Rose said, That sad speck won't hardly feed a fly. She wouldn't lift the pestle, so they had no rice at all. Hmm, the old woman muttered. Rose went to bed hungry. All night long, she heard mice scratching under the floor and screeching owls clawing at the window. In the morning, the old woman told her to milk the cow. Rose did, but she made fun of the two-headed creature, and all she got was a little sour milk not fit for drinking. So they had their breakfast coffee without cream. When the old woman lifted her head off her shoulders to brush her hair, Quick as a wink, Rose grabbed that head and said, I'm not going to put you back together till you give me some presents like my sister got. Oh, child, you're a wicked girl, said the old woman's head. But I've got to have my body back, so I'll tell you what to do. Go to the chicken house and take those eggs that say, take me, but leave be the ones that cry, don't take me. Then you toss those eggs over your right shoulder when you're on your way home. To be sure the old woman wasn't playing her a trick, Rose set the old woman's head out on the porch while her body sat groping around the cabin. Then she ran to the chicken house. Inside, all the plain eggs cried, Take me! while all the gold and silver and jeweled ones said, Don't take me! 
You think I'm fool enough to listen to you and pass up the prettiest ones? Not on your life. So she grabbed all the gold and silver and jewel eggs that kept yelling, Don't take me! And off she ran into the woods with them. As soon as she was out of sight of the old woman's cabin, she tossed the eggs over her right shoulder as fast as she could. But out of the shells came clouds of whip snakes, toads, frogs, yellow jackets, and a big old gray wolf. These began to chase after her like pigs after a pumpkin. Hollering bloody murder, Rose ran all the way to her mother's cabin. When the woman saw the swarm of things chasing her daughter, she tried to rescue her with a broom. But the wasp and wolf and all the other creatures wouldn't be chased off. So mother and daughter hightailed it to the woods with all the animals following. When they returned home, angry and sore and stung and covered with mud, they found Blanche had gone to the city to live like a grand lady, though she remained as kind and generous as always. For the rest of their lives, Rose and her mother tried to find the strange old woman's cabin and the talking eggs, but they never could find that place again. The end. To find The Talking Eggs and other books by Robert D. Sansusi, visit your local library.